Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing synaptic vesicle fusion. Okay, so we want to uh, now discuss the different types of fusion. Right, so, uh, the um, synaptic vesicle has now, is now going to fuse with the membrane. Now that the calcium signal has arrived and synaptotypin is putting all this effort into trying to fuse the two membranes together, what's going to happen is you're actually going to get fusion. But, this happens in a mysterious way. So, if we simplify this picture somewhat, here is our um, synaptic vesicle docked at the plasma membrane. Okay, now, when synaptotacmin is activated, what happens is you're going to get fusion. But initially, what happens is you don't get full fusion. Instead, you form a little tube, a little tube lined by phospholipid bilayer between the synaptic vesicle and the phospholipid bilayer. This little tube is known as a fusion pore. Okay? Now, neurotransmitter can move out of the synaptic vesicle through this fusion pore. So here's the neurotransmitter within the synaptic vesicle. And basically, it can move out, but only a little bit will trickle out, basically. Okay? Now, what can follow is two different things. Either the membrane can go on to fuse completely, so the synaptic vesicle fuses completely here, and releases all of this neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Okay? So, then you get the massive great release of neurotransmitter. Okay, right. So this will be um, this will be um, full fusion. Get rid of that. Full fusion. Okay. Alternatively, what can happen is that um, you can instead do something known as kiss and run. So basically, what can happen is the fusion pore will form. It'll release a tiny bit of neurotransmitter, but then it just closes. It collapses on itself, and the vesicle goes back to being docked. So this is what's known as kiss and run. So basically what happens is the synaptic vesicle forms a fusion pore, releases a tiny bit of neurotransmitter through that fusion pore into the synaptic cleft, but then doesn't undergo full fusion. Instead, it just closes the fusion pore off and instead returns back to uh, what it was originally, just a synaptic vesicle docked at the plasma membrane. So the, there are these two different forms of neurotransmitter release. One that's only going to release a tiny amount, this kiss and run uh, fusion, where basically, effectively, the synaptic vesicle kisses the membrane. It releases a tiny little bit of neurotransmitter and then it runs off. Whereas uh, the more classical interpretation of what happened was that you got this full fusion of the synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane where all of the vesicle contents was exocytosed onto uh, the plasma membrane. Okay, now, uh, a few little bits of evidence for this. What we can do is we can actually see these fusion pores, basically. And uh, to give you some examples, Let's look, at uh, let's look at neurons in the posterior pituitary. Okay, right, so um, where should I draw this? So the posterior pituitary gland. So just a bit of a reminder of the pituitary gland then first. So the pituitary gland consists of these two portions. So this is a drawing of the pituitary gland, which is a gland at the base of the brain. Okay, so you have the anterior pituitary here, or also sometimes known as the adenohypophysis. So this is the anterior pituitary gland. Okay, and this anterior pituitary gland consists of a bunch of cells which are secreting hormones. So it's also sometimes known as the adenohypophysis. So the adenohypophysis. Okay, so this is the uh, portion of the pituitary gland which releases hormones which have been produced on site, basically. Whereas, the posterior pituitary gland, this produces far fewer uh, hormones, firstly, and also what it actually consists of is not cells which are uh, producing uh, sorry, are producing hormone. Instead, 
it consists of the axon terminals of a bunch of neurons which have come down from nuclei in the hypothalamus above. So the hypothalamus is basically above the pituitary gland. So instead of having separate cells down here which are synthesizing hormone, instead, basically the posterior pituitary is just loads of axon terminals of neurons which have their cell bodies up in the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus sends down axons and they all sort of end in the posterior pituitary and basically these axon terminals release neurotransmitter which is released into the blood as a hormone, okay? Or sometimes often referred to as a neurohormone when um, the hormone is released by the axon terminal of a neuron. Okay. Now, inside these posterior pituitary cells, there are two types of vesicles, basically. So if we get an axon terminal or a posterior pituitary neuron, what you find is two types of neuron, uh, two types of um, uh, synaptic vesicle, basically. You find very big ones and very small ones. And the big ones are full of peptides, and the small ones are full of small molecule neurotransmitters. Okay, and basically, what we can actually do is measure the size of these fusion pores that you um, get from each of these um, from each of these synaptic vesicles. So, firstly, let me just tell you the size of each of these synaptic vesicles. So, the large synaptic vesicles are around 125 nanometers in diameter, whereas the small synaptic vesicles are generally around 50 nanometers in diameter. Now, when they form fusion pores, the fusion pore of the large, uh, of the large uh, synaptic vesicle here is generally around 0 0.6 nanometers in diameter. And for the small synaptic vesicles, it's generally around, uh, z sorry, no, 0 0.6 nanometers is the one for the small synaptic vesicles, so 0 0.6 nanometers, and the one for the large one is 2 nanometers. I do apologize for that. Okay, uh, so also what we can measure is the duration for which these large synaptic vesicles and the small synaptic vesicles are actually in this fusion pore state, so how long it takes them to either go into either of these states, and basically for the short, small synaptic vesicles, it takes around 0 0.3 seconds, Whereas for the large synaptic vesicles, it takes around 0 0.6 seconds. So that's called the poor duration, the poor duration. Okay, so basically that was just an example of uh, some statistics, well, some numbers uh, relating, regarding these um, fusion pores to show you how large and small they are. So in the posterior pituitary, we have these two sorts of synaptic vesicles, large and small, which are 125 nanometers and uh, 50 nanometers in diameter, respectively. They form uh, these fusion pores, again, which have different sizes. The large one has a fusion pore around 2 nanometers in diameter, and the small one has a fusion pore of around 0 0.6 nanometers in diameter. And the time that the fusion pore is stable for before it either uh, collapses to form a, um, well, collapses back to the um, just docked and with no connection um, between uh, the synaptic membrane and the plasma membrane, or it goes to the full fusion state, uh, that varies between those two types of synaptic vesicle in the posterior pituitary as well.